All right, in this video, I'm going to talk about solving quadratics by taking the square root. So, I mean, it seems like uh, this is kind of the middle ground of how easy quadratics can be. It's a little bit less involved in factoring, I think. Um, it's actually pretty simple, but you do have to understand the idea of imaginary numbers. So if you haven't seen anything on complex numbers, this is the time to go do that. Um, it's just a key component to it. So let's get to it. So the first one, it says m squared equals 49. Now, the equal sign here is an important uh, idea just because of the fact that it leads to the answer. I mean, why wouldn't it? You're just going to do, if I had like 2x here, so say it was 2m equals 49, well I would say, well, you know, 2m is multiply, so to get rid of it I'm going to divide. So I divide both sides by 2 and I get my answer. Uh, the thing about solving with square roots is the same thing except the opposite, or you have to know that the opposite of squaring something is taking the square root, obviously. I mean, taking a square, so say I have 9, I have a square and it has 9 parts to it. Now I can look at this from two perspectives. The first is to say that, well, I've got a square with sides 3, so I would call it 3 squared. That's what that means. It means that you have a square with sides 3. The opposite, which was 9, of course. The opposite of this, and if you want to count them, you can. Um, the opposite of this is to say, well, I have nine blocks and I want to make a square. So I have nine and I want to know what the bottom part would be. Well, the bottom part in a plant is called a root. So square root. What's the root of the square? It's three. That's kind of where it all comes from. And then you get, like, if you have too many squares, you can't make uh, an integer answer. So if I had ten blocks, well, I would have to do the square root of ten, which doesn't work out nearly as nice as it would if I were doing a, a 9, so I end up with 3.16, that sort of thing. But the real issue here is that that's what, you know, that's the end of all things answer uh, to sort of how it goes. And there's a bunch more here, 2, 2, 7, 7, 6, 6. I was fighting with myself whether I'd put that in there or not, but I'm going to. Anyway, those, that's how long the bottom would be, and also the sides, because it's a square. That's the idea. But the real issue is you have to know that the opposite of squaring something is taking the square root. So when I have this, I, okay, so this is squared, and I'm going to take the square root to get rid of it, because that's the opposite operation. And the opposite here, or the opposite of, or the square root of 49, goodness, um, is 7. But the reality of taking a square root here is that you have to be plus 7 or minus 7. Because once again, remember, negative 7 times negative 7 equals 49. And 7 times 7 is 49. So all that's in play. I'm going to check my answer. And you'll notice that they like to put it in curvy brackets, and that's totally appropriate. And that's what you should probably do when you get your final answer. That way it's easy for whoever is grading it to find. Or, you know, anybody that needs to use it just like this. Simple. Alright, so let's take it up just a little bit. What about this one? Same type of thing, but it's not going to work as smoothly as you can tell. So I'm going to take n squared equals 68. Well, the only thing I can do is take the square root, so I'm going to take the square root, and n is equal to the square root of 68. Unfortunately, it's not that simple. Now I need to go through and see if uh, 68, basically I need to put it in the simplest radical form. Does it reduce? Does it go down? Well, I know that 68 is divisible by 4, uh, which is 68 divided by 4 gives you 17. So I'm going to actually split this square root of 68 into the square root of 4 times the square root of 17. And I know the square root of 4 is 2. This doesn't reduce. It's as far down as it goes. So I get a final answer of n is equal to the 2 times the square root of 17, but plus minus. I should have done that here, but I didn't. So check my answer. Yep, there it is in notation. I'm just going to do the plus minus thing here, uh, just because I felt like it. There's really no reason you should put it in uh, the proper notation, but I'm trying to make this thing not take forever. Which it's not going that well as it is. I'm already rambling. Anyway, so 14n squared over 252. Now, in this case, I can't get do the square root yet because it's got this times negative 14 next to it, so I need to divide by negative 14. It's just like solving an equation, not super difficult, nothing that's going to you know, blow your mind or anything, and you get negative 18. 
Well, now I still don't have n by itself. I need to take the square root. n is equal to plus or minus the square root of negative 18. But we can't leave it like that. Of course not. First off, 18 could potentially be broken into parts, which it can, because it's divisible by 9. And also, I've got this i here, because I'm dealing with i equals the square root of negative 1. So anytime you have a negative under the square root, you're going to have to make something with an i. And we'll deal with that as soon as we get done with the idea of square root of 9 times square root of 2. What I'm going to do to cover for all this is say, OK, plus or minus i times the square root of 9 times the square root of 2. So the square root of 9 is, of course, 3. So n becomes plus or minus 3i times the square root of 2. So I'll test my answer to make sure I'm right. Yes, 3 times 3i times square root of 2, negative 3i times square root of 2. And if you didn't know the whole i thing, look into complex numbers and um, imaginary numbers. That's where it comes from. That's where I'm getting it. And if you don't understand the whole what's with the 9 the square root of 2 thing, that's simplest radical form. There's probably some stuff on that too. Go look for the, go search it out. Um, 3x equals 48, or 3x squared equals 48. This is basically the same thing. I'm going to divide by 3. 48 divided by 3 is 16. This one comes out nice and easy because I take square root and I get plus or minus 4. So that's that setup. So let's look at one that's more difficult. Mm, this is not really that much more difficult than anything else. The only difference here is I need to get rid of minus 8 by adding 8. 144. You take the square root. That one's pretty easy. I'm not even going to finish it. It's just pretty, it's obvious. Now, this one, number 7, and my numbers, not that the numbers matter. I don't even know why I kept them. But 7a squared minus 9 equals negative 168. In your answer for your paper, you'll probably need to keep your uh, lowercase a in here. But my a's and 9's tend to look alike after a while. So I'm just going to cover myself and do this. So the furthest thing away from a squared is, of course, minus 9. So I need to add 9. Those cancel out. And negative 168 plus 9 is equal to negative 159. Now, the issue is, how do I get rid of div times 7? Well, it's divide, of course. Why wouldn't you? And this is where this problem starts to get really messy, and no one will like it. But anyway, negative 159 over 7, because if you do the division, you'll end up getting this insane decimal point that you don't want to deal with. Now, once again, square rooting. Now the hard part about this is you can't have a square root in the denominator. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to change colors to talk about this. What I'm going to do with this, because that's what this is, it's just broken into parts, I can't have a square root in the denominator. You have to have a square, and the quickest way to, or you have to have an integer number, a non-radical. Uh, the quickest way to get rid of the square is just to multiply it by itself, so times square root of 7. Because if you do this, you'll end up with uh, square root, which is essentially saying 7 and 1 half, times 7 and 1 half. And you'll have the 1 half plus 1 half, which will make it 7 over 1, which is exactly what you want to do. So with that being said, I'm going to multiply the bottom by the square root of 7, and I'm going to have to multiply the top by the square root of 7 as well. This is not a fun problem. So these cancel out, and you end up with 7 on the bottom. And it's not a square root, it's just 7. On top, you have to multiply negative 159 and 7, and you end up getting one the square root. First off, it's negative, but we'll deal with that in a minute. 1,113 over 7. It's a beast. So. I end up working this one out and getting the square the neg the square root, sorry, negative one one three one 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 three over seven. And this is plus or minus. Now, once again, not allowed to leave a negative under square root. So we're going to show the imaginary answer. 
So plus or minus i times the square root of 113, 1113, over 7. And just to make sure you know that I'm not making these up, these up and I'm sort of actually correct, there it is. i times the square root of 1113 over 7, and negative i times the square root of 113, and all that is over 7. So that was the farthest that these types of problems will go. Um, it's got imaginary numbers, it's got irrational things, but the issue is to try to get the squared variable by itself and then take the square root and then do everything that you need to do from there. So this is the most involved in general that these will go. What's the perfect time to use? You may have noticed the pattern at the end of all things. When's a good time to use taking square roots? When there's no term that's linear. So no term that just has an x or just has an a in this case. You'll notice that there's no a term. Just a squared and constant terms. That's the best time to use taking square roots. So that's it.